Hello everyone, my name is Swatant and welcome back to our channel Flying Europe. In the previous videos, we discussed about a bunch of struggles which we faced when we relocated to the Netherlands. If you haven't watched that video already, the link is coming on the video right now. You can click on it and watch that video as well. In this video, we will discuss more about the medical struggle and we will also discuss about the Dutch healthcare system in detail. Why Dutch healthcare system is really a struggle for a lot of people and especially Indians. So there are multiple components in Dutch healthcare system. The first component we will talk about is your health insurance or medical insurance. So whenever you get relocated to the Netherlands and you get your uh, BSN number, which is the social security number uh, in, in the US, people call it social security number. And in India, you can also compare this number with your Aadhaar card number because it's a unique identification number for everybody. So the moment you get your BSN and also your residence permit, then you can apply for your uh, health insurance. So there are multiple companies which provide the health insurance. You can choose based on your priorities, what cover you want. Maybe you can get for the basic one and uh, maybe you can also include your dental or other critical illnesses. So uh, you can choose whatever you want. And there are a bunch of companies which provide that. I will add the list of the companies in the description. And also this is a mandatory thing. You cannot skip it because in India, I mean, it is not compulsory to take the health insurance, but here it is mandatory to take the health insurance. If you do not take it, then probably you might be fined. And the health insurance will cost you somewhere between 150 euros to 300 or 350 euros based on what components you have opted for, uh, what things you have included. The second component of Dutch healthcare system is registering to a GP. GP stands for general practitioner. So whenever you get your health insurance ready, you need to register to a GP. So general practitioner is not just one doctor. Actually, it's a hospital. It's a small local hospital or clinic in your area, uh, which you register to. And whenever you get sick, the first step you need to do is get an appointment and go to your GP. You cannot go to any other doctor. Like in India, we, we, uh, whenever we want, whenever we get sick, we, we can go to any doctor, right? But here situation is not like that. You cannot go to any doctor. You need to go to your registered GP. So this is the second step you need to do. So now let's say you have both the things in place. You have got your health insurance. You have, you have now registered with your GP. And now let's discuss what happens when you really get sick and why we call it a struggle. So the first step which you need to take whenever you get sick is call your GP and take the appointment. And whenever you get the appointment, usually you get the appointment uh, after three days, four days or five days. It depends on the busy schedule of the of the clinic. Uh, in, in If you are lucky, you can get the appointment in the next day. And if you are unlucky, you will get the appointment maybe after seven, eight days. So this is a struggle. And I mean, all, of course, we are adapting to the situation. But for newcomers, definitely it's, it's a struggle because in India, we are habitual of uh, going to the doctor on the same day we get sick. So when, when you hear that today you are sick, but you only can meet your doctor after five days or six days. So of course it feels bad. So now, now let's see what happens when you actually go to the clinic. Uh, first of all, I wanted to tell you that uh, be on time. Do not get late because uh, it's, it's a fixed appointment. For example, if you get an appointment at Monday at 9 a.m., so be there before 9 a.m. Because even though if you are late by five minutes or six minutes, yeah, probably you will, your appointment will be canceled and you will, you will take another appointment and again, you will get an appointment after five days or six days. So be on time. Uh, some clinics are flexible because I got late once five minutes. So they accepted, uh, but I have heard from people that even though you are uh, late by two minutes or th three minutes, they, they are not going to accept your appointment and they are going to cancel your appointment. And again, you need to book it again. You will get it for after five days or seven days. So do not do that. So now let's understand uh, what actually happens when you meet the GP. Uh, whenever you meet the GP, you just tell your problem. And uh, this this person, this GP is not a very uh, qualified or a specialist doctor. Usually uh, they are inexperienced and junior doctors. And I've also seen that some doctors are not actually, uh, you know, graduated ones. They are just studying somewhere and they are in doing the internship there. So they're not very qualified. 
but still at least they will understand your issues whatever you are facing and if the gp thinks that he can comfortably you know uh, prescribe you medicines and, and solve your problem then he will do that otherwise he will refer you to a specialist and it it also happens sometimes that he is not convinced that you need a specialist doctor and he will somehow try to solve your problem but in that case you need to emphasize that no i really need to see a specialist and please refer me to that so that also sometimes you may need to do that so now when he refers you to a specialist doctor now you need to take another appointment because specialist doctor is also a busy person right and that appointment also will take some time and it is also possible that your gp will tell you to do some tests maybe blood tests or some urine test or something else so at that situation you need to take the appointment from the laboratory so in both the cases it will take some time depending on the busy schedule of the doctor and the lab so uh, if if i give you an example uh, for anukriti when the doctor told her to get the ultrasound done she got an appointment after one month uh, for the ultrasound because the ultrasound section in the hospital was too busy so this might happen that you, for the specialist doctor also you will get a uh, appointment after maybe 10 days or 20 days or 30 days depending on the schedule so this is this is why we we again call it a struggle and again i want to emphasize on the timing so whenever you get the appointment of specialist doctor or the lab be on time because uh, uh, in our case the laboratory was open only from 9 to 10 in the morning so we need to be there at that time uh, otherwise it's not possible so be uh, be on time in that situation as well now let's talk about the cost of these things so a lot of things in the whole scenario will be covered by your insurance company for example the consulting fees of the doctor um, the, the gp the maybe the consulting fees of your specialist doctor and some some medicines but there are some cases where uh, some tests and uh, some medicines are not covered so for these medicines you need to pay extra for example for blood test you need to pay for uh, some other specific medicines you need to pay right so this is an extra cost which you need to bear and actually it really hurts because you are paying a lot of money in in insurance and again you need to pay the money for medicines as well because the insurance cost itself is around you know 200 euros a month and if you get sick you need to pay for the medicines and for the blood test and many other things so <laughs> it's a bad situation for these reasons we actually call it a struggle uh, for the people who have been living here for a long time maybe they have adopted to the situation but for the people who just arrived or maybe uh, living here for just a few months or a year so for them it's it's really a struggle so what you can do now you actually cannot solve this problem because it's it's a it's a system uh, it's a dutch healthcare system and which of course you cannot change but uh of course you can deal with it there are many uh, tips or many work arounds you can do and uh, you can deal with these problems so i have some tips for you which we, uh, we applied personally and also we have seen people here uh, they are using these tips to you know uh, to deal with and to cope up with the situation so the first thing i can tell you is have some medicines ready with you so whenever you coming to the netherlands from india just uh, get some medicines from there uh, maybe you can go to your family doctor and just get a regular prescription for you know for allergies uh, for headache fever and whatever basic uh, medicines you can get from your family doctor just get it because in worst situation uh, when you get an appointment after 7 days at least you can get those medicines and recover yourself uh the second point is repeat prescription uh, there is a concept of repeat prescription so let's understand it with an example uh let's say you you get sick and you uh, get to the gp and you get the medicines and you you are now recovered so in future uh, if you get sick with the same disease so again you don't need to go to the gp what you need to do is you can uh, you can call your gp and ask for the medicine which you got for the first time so basically he will uh, he will make a repeat prescription to you with the same medicines you got last time 
and you can directly go to the pharmacy and it the medicines will be ready because usually the pharmacy and the, the your gp are usually linked so they will directly uh, send your prescription to the pharmacy and you can go to the pharmacy and collect your medicines the next thing i want to talk about is very generic thing which is try to adapt to the weather because the weather here in the netherlands is extremely different from india and i have observed among a lot of indians and especially for those uh, who just arrived in the netherlands they keep their house temperature uh, at around uh, 24 degrees or 25 degrees so do not do that because uh, when you keep uh, 25 degrees inside your house and in the winters when it's extremely cold outside maybe sometimes in in the heavy winters it's minus 5 or minus 6 degrees centigrade so when you go from 25 to minus 5 it's 30 degrees difference it will not be good for your health so i usually keep my house temperature between 18 to 19 and i would recommend you to keep the temperature low not uh, maybe 15 16 but at least 18 19 it's a moderate temperature and maybe one last tip i can give you is about balancing the vitamins and minerals in your body because uh, in the netherlands uh, based on the weather we have sunny days only for 4 months or 4 and a half months and rest of the days are not sunny so you will not get sufficient vitamin d and also if uh, from the food you are not getting other vitamins i would highly recommend that you take multivitamins on regular basis and also do exercise and keep yourself fit because if you keep getting sick here uh you will always be frustrated so i would i would say just keep yourself healthy so i think i have covered everything i wanted to cover and uh, please let me know in the comments if you find this video informative and useful and for the people who are already living in the netherlands and watching this video just let me know if i have missed something and also if you are living in some other country just uh, let me know in the comments what struggles you are facing in that country In our next video we are planning to cover another struggle which we faced which is the struggle of housing so stay tuned with us and if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video hello everyone welcome back to my channel main aa raha hu pura aise leta leta oh body ki jagah badi ho gaya if you haven't watched already fuck